Hey, Fleet One, J70 Sailors, Kristen Berry here. Long time no see. My apologies for not getting this video to you all sooner. It's been an incredibly busy winter. Since I saw you last, we've had events in Miami, St. Petersburg, Tampa. I've done multiple North U online clinics. And, uh, and interestingly enough, in each one of those, we've talked about data. So I'm pulling into Annapolis, got the last five miles to go here. Uh, spring is springing, which is very cool to see. And a classic late afternoon uh, traffic as well. Anyway, I'm pulling into town and I know the first thing that I have to get done is this video. And so here we go. First, before we get started, let me give a little apology. I've put this video together three or four times and it just never felt right. And at this point, I'm out of time. So we're gonna go with whatever we cut today. But you know, we it's really kind of hard to put a three hour lecture into a presentation that's consumable, especially for those of you who weren't there. And shooting it in Florida, that didn't make any sense. So I keep deleting this thing, but now I think we're ready to do it. I've got it all put together. So let's head to the desk and make it happen. Hey everybody, welcome to Gale Force Sailing HQ. We're here at the desk to talk about data. Hard to imagine how much energy is harnessed in there. The imagination is not necessary. The scale is readily quantifiable. We are presently generating 12.75 billion gigawatts per... Exactly when will they reach Haven? Exactly. 13 hours, 9 minutes, 22 seconds, 350... Th Thank you. 5 months, 6 days, 11 hours, 2 minutes. Thank you, data. No, not that kind of data. The kind of data I'm talking about is the kind of data that we use on and off the race course to improve our sailing. So, I usually break that into three different forms of data, if you will. The first is our strategic data. This is the information that we collect and use to make decisions about where we want to go on the race course in the absence of all the other boats. The second is our performance data. Our performance data is the data that we use in the moment to determine if we're sailing in the mode or style that we're interested in. And third is, uh, I guess I might call it coaching data. It's the information that we collect from these magic boxes that allows us to come off the water, assess our performance, and improve in the future. Well, the strategic data is the information that we need to make a plan for where we want to go on the race course. So imagine you're sailing around in the pre-start and you're doing wind shots. You're turning your boat head to wind and you're determining where the wind is coming from. That information is really important because most often the race committee is reporting out where they think the wind is coming from and where they intend to set the first mark of the race course. And based upon where the wind is coming from, you should be able to determine if one side of the start line is more advantaged from the other, or maybe one side of the race course is more advantaged than the other. That kind of information is invaluable to making a game plan prior to the start. Some other strategic information that is really important is usually sort of based around the start line. So with today's magic boxes, whether it's a Vicaros or a Velocitech or a Sailmon or even a phone app, you can determine where the start line is by pinging the ends of the line. We sail up and we hit the button so that we drop a GPS marker at the committee boat end and we do the same thing at the pin end of the line. Now, as we sail around, the computer is telling us how far we are from the line at any given time, usually expressed in meters. And it can sometimes even tell us how far we are from the line in time. Now, on the time to the line feature, one that I really like to use, it's using its expectation of the boat's performance. So again, this is part of the information that we need to collect prior to the start of any race, so I would consider this our strategic information. But we sail upwind and keep the boat sailing at its optimal, or what we believe is its optimal performance, and the computer is logging that information. So now when we're sailing around in the pre-start, at any point in the pre-start box, the 
the little magic box is able to tell us how far we are from the line in time. Imagine you come out onto starboard tack with 40 seconds to go and your box says it's 27 seconds to the line sailing close hauled. Now it's using your best performance to determine that number in most cases so you have to add a little time to that to be able to speed up but you know you came out onto starboard at 45 there's 27 seconds to the line you're just a little bit early and you got to wait to pull the trigger. It's an empowering feature on many of the boxes today. Let's talk about performance data. So sailing upwind and downwind, we don't always have the benefit of a like sailed neighbor right next to us, where we can determine with no instrumentation at all, if we're sailing the same angle, same speed, and who might be getting a net benefit out of that. So having an idea of your numbers means that you can look at one of these boxes and really determine right away if you're sailing as well as you can. There's three pieces of information that in today's world are critical to making in the moment assessments of your performance. The first is speed and that can either be speed through the water or speed over ground. Most of us feel like speed through the water is the number that we want to use. Um, it isn't influenced by current, it's just how fast the boat is moving through the water and we have for any given condition, wind strength, sea state, we have a pretty good idea of what our speed target should be both upwind and downwind. Next angle of heel has become such an important and critical piece of information and it's really hard to get accurate data without the benefit of one of the boxes. So angle of heel tells us how much we're tipped over and most modern boats prefer to sail pretty darn flat and if you're in the J70 flatter than you think. So having these boxes to confirm any changes that we're making or how hard we're hiking is going to make a big difference in your upwind and downwind performance. Finally, we've got our heading information and our heading information is maybe less performance and more strategic, but it does help us know about trends. If we're sailing two or three degrees higher on one tack than another, or if we are sailing, um, sailing along and take a header, uh, that information can really help us make decisions on when, when it's time to tack. So performance data, strategic data. Finally, we've got information that we can use about uh, our performance that we can take with us off the water. So any of the boxes today are not only giving you the real time information, but they are recording that data. They're leaving a little breadcrumb trail, not only of where you went, but exactly how you were sailing in the moment. We can take that information and we can jump into a program like Charted Sales, where we can do some analysis and comparison, especially if we have sister ships where we can get their data too. Let me show you some examples from this winter down in Davis Island. So let's take some of that data that we had from our boxes and put it to work. This is a race that took place uh, in January down at Davis Island. And there's a bunch of boats that are included in this. We're just gonna kind of take a look here. Um, if you look up in this box, we can see the performance of the boats. Let's look, look at the overall rank. So in this race, Pensagall got first, Progress got second, the Red Hots got third, Bella got fourth. Now, <clears throat> the reason these two boats here aren't showing up is either their data is incomplete or I deleted them for some reason. And you can see the total time of the race, that's from when the gun went off until they crossed the finish line, the distance that they sailed, and the average speed that they sailed. This performance right here helps us do some comparative analysis and see right away, did somebody sail faster than us? Did they sail shorter than us? Or did they do both? And we'll be able to break this in to its many parts, leg by leg, and, and examine it in greater detail. But pretty nice little snapshot, really beneficial. And you don't all have to have the same magic box. Penn Seagal might be using a uh, Velocitech, and I know that Progress is using a uh, Vicaros. The Red Hots are using a Vicaros. Bella was using maybe a Race Geek or something like that um, for this race. So there, you can get this information from all over the place, including your phone. Um, so anyway, uh, also you should note that even your GoPro is collecting much of this data. So it doesn't have to be purpose built to collect data in order for you to get it and use it in a system like this. That's one of the reasons that I just love charted sales and other programs like it.
Okay, so we've seen the overall pro, uh, performance here. Uh, Penn Seagal was quite a bit quicker. They sailed um, a shorter distance. Uh, quicker, meaning they did the race in less time. They sailed quite a bit shorter distance to the other boats. They were in the 8,700 meter range, but they weren't always faster. So that might mean that they were sailing a little higher, slower on the windward legs and a little lower, slower uh, on the downwind legs. But their average was just three one hundredths slower than progresses. But that 300 meter delta here is, uh, is obviously the big difference. So at any given moment, we can see in snap in time where these people are. So let's go back here. We're going to, we're going to be just a few minutes into the start and we're going to watch the start. Now this is playing at 10 times speed. Uh, so let's just see what happens here as the boats are jockeying around. Looks like they're on their final approaches to the line. If you look here, this is the start line. These are all the strings of all the boats, and you can see the performance at any given moment. Um, so these boats are on their way to start, and there's the gun. These little baubles here, these little... Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah. That's where this boat was at the start. That's where this boat was at the start. You see those little dots? And one of the cool things is, is that we can now come in to this data box over here, and we can slide back here to the start time. We're going to be in the start sequence. And this is going to give us real-time information up here about their speed over ground, their course over ground, their VMG, what the true wind angle is, their angles of heel. Pitch is a little uh, not very useful and hard to calibrate. But one of the things that I love is in the performance tab here. At the start, we can see how far from the line they were the speed that they were at when the gun went off, um, the speed they were at when the line, they got to the line, and how many meters from the line they were when the gun went off. That's really powerful information. Um, and I'll tell you, some of the boxes have little Easter eggs in them. For instance, if, the, if you hit the Sailmon, if you hit the line with zero seconds, zero meters at full speed or faster, it says spot on. That's kind of a fun thing to trigger. Anyway, really good information here for improving your starts. Sometimes we think that we were really close to the line and our memories at the end of the day aren't all that good at remembering what the box said. Uh, this information is cataloged and really, really useful. All right, let's look at the windward leg now. So if we look at the windward leg, same thing. We can look at the overall performance of the boats on the leg. Progress actually won this leg. They went, uh, did the leg in 13 minutes, eight seconds. Uh, they sailed a little bit longer than Pensagall, but their average and their uh, their average speed was uh, a little bit quicker, and their average VMG was quite a bit quicker uh, overall. This can really help us figure out whether or not it was where we went or how we went when we're trying to determine what our performance uh, delta was. You'll see over here in the image that the shaded area sort of represents the out of bounds area. This beat was clearly fairly skewed, a lot of port tack in it. So let's see where the boats went coming off. And I'm gonna just go ahead and increase this to 20 times, otherwise we'll be here all day. You can see progress leading the pack there. You can see that this boat sort of sailed off the race course. But at any given time, we can also see the performance of a boat on each of the legs. Really useful information. This just helps immensely at the end of the day when we try to remember where we went and how we went there. Uh, and if you have a tuning partner in a regatta or in a practice session, this is some really, really powerful stuff. One of the other things that's really useful for upwind legs is that we have a maneuver analysis tool. So we can look at any given tack on the race course and we can figure out how we went into the tack, our speed in and our speed out. And we can also figure out how much distance we lost and how much time we spent tacking. This is really useful, especially I find in a practice session. Imagine you go out and you do three sets of 10 timed tacks. So we're gonna sail upwind, tacking on a two minute interval, and we're gonna do 10 tacks. 
Then we're going to come back downwind. We're going to start from the same position, usually rounding a buoy. And we're going to sail upwind, tacking on that interval, doing 10 tacks. And come back downwind, round the same buoy, sail upwind, doing 10 tacks. And then we'll come back and we'll use the tack analysis tool to figure out how we're doing. This is a really good way of setting a benchmark for your performance and something that you can use to um, track any changes in your tacking style, uh, your tacking angles, speed in, speed out, and wor really work the system. One way to sweeten that up and really make it even more powerful is if you run a GoPro or have a camera, even your iPhone, mounted at the back of the boat and you record each of the tacks. If you find one of the tacks that seems to have an anomaly, either it's a really good one or a not so good one, you can go back and look at the film and figure out exactly what happened in that tack. It can be a powerful way of cleaning up some boat handling. All right, now let's go downwind. Same drill here, I'm gonna keep the pace at 20 times, uh, but you can see the boat's coming around the, the top of the course and sailing downwind. Uh, in this case, Penn Seagal made the pass on this leg. Somehow they sailed uh, almost a full minute uh, shorter in time. They must have sailed, let's see here. Yeah, they sailed a fair bit quicker um, than Progress did, and their VMG was uh, uh, a lot better. Um, and that allowed them to get down the course quite a bit sooner than, than the other boats. Same thing we did for the tacks. We can look at jibe maneuvering here, too and figure out if there's anything that's strange. Uh, looking at distance lost, time spent in the maneuver, speed in, speed out, and what the angles are. Really useful stuff to figure out if it's our boat handling or our straight line boat speed that's affecting our overall performance. All right, so there's one more piece of information or data that I want to share with you that I think is becoming more and more important for improving your performance. And that's just your phone. Your phone is such an important data tool because it not only can capture information, but it's a great place to store information as well. So rig tuning data, notes about previous performance, the calculator to figure out your scores, all of that stuff is critical information and always at your fingertips. But I find that the camera in my phone is the most important data collection tool that I have. So when I have a sail shape that I think is fast and going really, really well, I love to take a picture of it. And with modern programming today, we're able to take those pictures and actually do a scan to figure out how the sail is setting up. But that's more sophisticated than you really need. What you want is to be able to have repeatable settings. So taking pictures of how you've got the boat set up, where you've got the traveler car, the numbers that you've got your jib sheet at, and then taking pictures of the sails themselves is gonna help you create that catalog in your memory and in your brain of fast sail shapes. So don't be afraid to take pictures of your sails shooting from the bottom to the top, shooting their leech positions, and then trying to catalog all of the settings so that you can get back to those fast places in the future. All right, so that's a brief summary of what we talked about at SSA just a few weeks ago. I'm excited to be coming back to Annapolis and look forward to helping anyone who's interested in getting their data more integrated into their sailing. Feel free to give me a call or drop me an email if you'd like to figure out how to make data work for you. Until next time, I'm Kristen Berry, See you on the water.